The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 6th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question you can't call in, Stevie has got your back. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our, ba our day with a slightly mixed bag out there. The slight mix comes from the NASDAQ composite. That's up 54 points. Otherwise, and the NASDAQ one are just moved up by two points out there. Otherwise, the other EOS indices are trading to the downside. 177 for the Dow, 10 for the uh, S&P, 7 for the Russell, 16 for the uh, semis. Trannies are down 271. Gold's up 9 bucks. Silver's up 73 cents. Uh, light speed crude is up 97 pennies. Trading out at 70.18. Natural gas up 2 cents at 193. 30 year treasury is basically flat. It's back 4 ticks. Printed out at 125.02. Uh, to the upside, leader in the uh, clubhouse is KC General Store up 21 bucks. 6%. Market tax is up 15 bucks. 6.5%. Montreal, Bank of Montreal up 15 bucks, 4%. Domino's Pizza, $11 move, 2 and 6 tenths percent. And Tesla is up 5%. That's an $11 move to the upside. Our shaker to the downside is McKesson Corp up 49 bucks, 8%. CSW Industries, 33 bucks, 10%. Eli Lilly, 31 bucks, 3%. Saya, the mover of 24 bucks, nearly 6%. Costco down 13 bucks, 1.5% there. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Let's begin our day by taking a look at New York Stock Exchange. It's advanced client oscillator it did close back below zero yesterday we're below that zero threshold for two consecutive days sellers are the one that are in control of the general markets if we take a look at spot vix spot vix is trading above its 50-day exponential moving average the 50-day is at 1707 spot vix at 1997 that gives us sellers the edge here too so sellers have the edge the issue for the s p 500 let's just go flip over and take a look at the uh White background charts. The in, the, so we've got the sellers are the ones that are basically in control of the market. What they're dealing with is the buyers uh, that are at the bottom of that daily profile. That daily profile is at 55.16. Uh, about 55.60. Yeah, it's going to be 55.16 or 55.16 and a quarter out there. And that's the level that price needs to close above to suggest a move back towards that 53.19.50 level. Now, it's very possible that that last move to the downside at least, at least was an intraday bottom. Why is that? If we look at the 10-minute chart out here, let me just simply expand that out. If we look at the 10-minute chart, it completed a TD9 count topping pattern at 10.20 this morning. That level was uh, then uh, tested and rejected at 10.30. That thing took hold. Once it got below 55.28, that set up that move down to the 55.15 level. That's its breakout area. Now, here's what I want you to just notice about the 10-minute chart and the daily chart. In essence, a similar type pattern, a TD9 count top that is in place out here, price testing that profile level of support. You break below that, 53.19. 
2019 becomes that target. No different, no different with regard to any time frame. However, price did get back to that key level of support on a 10 minute basis. And we look at the other charts out here, the other intraday charts, you've got a TD9 count bottom on the two hour chart. That would be negated with a close below 550750. So you got 550750 and on the daily chart you're looking at 5516. So let's use 557 5507. Yeah, 5507. If we close below that, odds are going to favor that we're going to continue to head lower. But you still have that 2-hour TD9 count bottom, a 60-minute road momentum indicator bottom, a TD9 count bottom on the 30-minute time frame that is held. Of course, we know where resistance is at as well. If we open up that 30-minute time frame chart, why did the rally stop where the rally stopped? Well, Stevie would say it was because of profile and its TD9 count breakdown resistance level, which is in the range of 55.5150 to 55.55. 535. Can't trade to that. We'll make it 50. That's all fives out there. So if we do get a close above 55, 55, 50, that's going to suggest a further rally. However, there is one bout of sellers that exist out here at that uh, bearish engulfing candle that formed at 11 o'clock. Um, that was uh, two days ago. And that's up at the uh, 5565 level. So really it's going to be a close above 5565 that would head us north. And to the downside, I've given you the number. I don't remember it off the top of my head out there. And that's what you'd be looking at. Perhaps we're just inside some kind of trading range. If we take a look at uh, the ES Mini again on the daily time frame, what we'll see is we're trading with inside yesterday's bar. We haven't taken out the high. We haven't taken out the low out there. So maybe it's just a little bit of a chop, chop, fizz, fizz uh, move today. Now, what's really important here, you've got that nice topping pattern inside the uh, daily time frame here on the ES Mini. If we take a look at the seasonal pattern, over the last 96 years for the S&P 500, we see that we top just about right now for September on average, which then takes us lower into the end of October out there. That would be our two bar monthly knee jerk reaction low. Uh, we should be so fortunate to get that because if we get that, the talk is going to be all and we, we very likely are going to get that right. If interest rates, if uh, Powell starts reducing interest rates, unlike everybody, not everybody, I know not you, but, you know, all the other people that believe if we reduce interest rates that the markets are going to just take off topside out there. Boy, they've got a different thing coming to them. So right now we've got just really a, a perfect storm out here for the S&P 500 to move lower for a couple of months with it just topping out just about really right now. We take a look at that seasonal pattern out there. Uh, so uh, those are the parameters for the S&P 500. We've got about a minute. Let me see if I can punch up these uh, NQ charts out here, see what they're signaling to you and I. Of course, they're really signaling lower price because on the daily time frame, price is below profile support. I know you don't. Well, now you see it right now. So odds favor a move down towards that 18,383 level. Now, in the case of the NQ, it has taken out yesterday's high, and then started moving lower, but we have not taken out yesterday's low. And with regard to the NQ, we are in day number three to the uh, downside. If we take a look at that, consecutive moves to the downside out there. So we should be expecting a two-day bounce sometime soon. Not taking out yesterday's low out there could be indicating that that soon is just about now. Uh, if we take a look at its uh, signals out here, no TD9 count tops on the 10-minute uh, chart like we had inside the, uh, in the ES Mini out here. All I've really got is price running into resistance at that 18, uh, 19, 178 level and 19, 129 level, top of the uh, two hour profile and the top of the T9 count breakdown area on that 60 minute chart. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so yesterday we had a request from uh, Hector to take a look at the U.S. dollar index out there. And I said we would come back to those charts in order for me to really show what's going on. I've got to use a different data feed. And uh, so it gets complicated out there. So this is a snapshot uh, from this morning. Maybe it was about an hour ago with regard to the uh, with regard to the U.S. dollar index. Now, we're going to take a look at this. We're going to take a look at the euro, the yen. I know that Joe D wants to take a look at the yen. So we're going to be able to do that for you as well. And we're going to take a look at the Great British Pound. So as we take a look at the uh, monthly chart here, so we want to understand what the longer term picture of the U.S. dollar index. We can see here a clear consolidation pattern and prices nearing the bottom of that consolidation. It actually hit the bottom of that consolidation uh, uh, as we closed out the month of, uh, of August. So the consolidation moved to the downside in essence is over at this stage. At the same time, we've got price in the bottom of that consolidation, a possible or potential level of support on a weekly time frame. You've got a TD9 count bottom that's going to go ahead and complete this week. That does mean that the U.S. dollar index could move lower between uh, today and tomorrow, obviously, even taking even moving lower below that TD9 count bottom. But that should be the bottom. Now, I'm not suggesting that the U.S. dollar index is going to get back to last week's low out there. It's just a possibility. I can't rule it out. Why would I say it's not going to go back there? If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, you see a TD9 count, a road momentum indicator, and there's even a buy the D point bottom. So you got three bottoms out there. Now, do three bottoms make it a stronger bottom than one? Uh, I don't think so. You just really need one bottom signal. But you've got three, and so I would mention that. And what we've seen so far is prices pulled back and now tested a key level of support. And that key level of support is the uh, top of its daily profile, old resistance that now may become new support out there. And that's and it's also tested that red oscillator and change line. So on a daily time frame, I don't know if we are just yet, but we could be setting up the C point today of an A to B equals CD to the upside out there. So the monthly says we should go higher. The weekly says we should go higher. The daily says we should go higher out there. Um, if you look at those intraday charts, many of those have bottoms as well. A 240-minute TD9 count bottom. Uh, likely the 300 minutes is going to do the same thing. The two-hour TD9 count bottom, 120-minute. 
uh, Rhodes Medium Indicator bottom and probably a TD9 count out there. So everything here, Hector, is uh, I know that everybody's talking about the U.S. dollar index getting croaked. I'm just reading to you what the charts are communicating to me. No bias or anything whatsoever. If you've listened to the show long enough, you know that that's really what I do. Is it you don't see the chart? No way. Oh, son of a gun. I've been talking all that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. You've seen FXY. All right about that. There's Stevie's brain fart. God, I hate when that happens, but it does periodically. So here, um, now you've got the U.S. dollar index chart. Uh, thank you, InnoVisual. Thank you, Mr. B. Thank you, McGuppy out there. Again, my apology. Now, go back into, and uh, Mr. B, yeah. So now we've got the monthly time frame chart on the left. You can see the clear consolidation. Uh, this is a great chart, for, I think, for you guys to take a snapshot of. So those of you that have you know some kind of screen uh, capture out there, Great chart, and you'll be able to listen to if you want to go back and replay, you know, what I said. But on the weekly time frame, you can see the TD9 count bottom. That's lined up with being at the bottom of consolidation on the monthly chart. You see the Roach Mintum indicator bottom on the daily, the TD9 count pattern on the daily out there, and price now pulling back and testing that key level of support. Then you'll see on those intraday charts all kinds of bottoming signals out there. I'm not saying that the dollar can't get croaked. What I am saying, though, is what the charts tell us right now is that is not in the cards. Now, we take out the... Uh, um, we take out the consolidation pattern. We get below the TD9 count bottom on the uh, daily time frame, the Roseman to indicator bottom on the uh, daily time frame. Then that's a different story. But right now at 1122 in the morning, that's not the story of the U.S. dollar index charts out there when we put everything in perspective. Now, here's the monthly time frame so that we have the bigger picture as to what's going on. In the case of the euro, you can see just like the dollar, right, those two pretty much emulate each other. Not completely, but pretty close. You've got a 57.6% weighting of the euro inside that U.S. dollar index. So it makes sense that we would see that similar consolidation. What did price do last month? The euro rallied right up. It was getting stronger as the dollar was getting weaker right up into the top of its consolidation. So we want to watch these consolidation patterns out there, uh, Hector, because they're going to give us that bigger picture out there. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, monthly chart, for the yen, you can see a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that's out there, price below the green oscillator and change line. Odds favor that this wants to move lower. As this is moving lower, the yen is getting stronger, the dollar is getting weaker out there. If the uh, euro is moving higher, the euro is getting stronger, the dollar is getting weaker. So we've got some offset potentially here. But if we take a look at the uh, weighting inside the yen, it's a 13.6% weighting. So I know, Joe, that you're asking about FXY, which we're going to go take a look at out there. But just know that uh, this chart here is suggesting that the uh, yen should continue to get uh, weak, uh, stronger out here at this stage of the game on a monthly basis. The Great British Pound, if it closes above 1.3143 come month end out there, that's going to go ahead and trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Now, if that's moving higher, that's getting stronger. The U.S. dollar will get weaker. There's 11.9% weighting inside there. So we really need to pay attention to these three currency pairs because they are the ones that are making up the uh, dollar. Now, if we go down and take a look at the euro and the uh, the euro on the uh, the euro and the uh, yen and the pound for its daily, its weekly. Uh, uh, time frames out here. Uh, we don't need the U.S. dollar index. We've already covered that. Here on a daily time frame, what we see is a TD9 count top on the euro. So the euro needs to close above 1.1122 out there to suggest it wants to continue to move higher. Otherwise, we've just seen a bit of a, a counter trend move up to that oscillator and change line. If we take a look at the daily time frame for the yen, the daily time frame for the yen shows a TD9 count bottom. If price closes below that low, that low is a uh, one. 141.69. If price closes below that, the bottom chart that shows an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, that's going to come into fruition. And the yen would get much stronger out there. If you take a look at the weekly chart on the uh, euro, you'll see a nice TD9 count top that's going to go ahead and complete this week. With regard to the Great British Pound, it negated a daily TD9 count top. It did that last week out there. So I'm uncertain on a daily time frame what the uh, Great British Pound is signaling to you and I. We do have an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside inside the uh, Great British Pound. If we do get a bearish reversal candle that would in fact uh, generate a sell the d point uh, out there so there's another perspective for you to take a look at uh, joe uh, because looking at the fxi is not going to give us a clear picture like the uh, uh, yen so in this case here you really want to watch that uh, 141.69 of the u.s dollar japanese yen 
to assist you with regard to where uh, where your trade in FXY is likely headed to out there. So watch that. That's a key area out there. What else do we have? I had mentioned earlier that people are thinking that the markets are just going to cream higher if interest rates move lower. If we take a look at the history out here, you've got the S&P 500 that uh, rose 34% uh, back in the 2002-2002. Uh, a seven uh, time frame uh, that was with a 30 that was with a, uh, a rise in interest rates of 170 percent we can see in 2016 we had the s p 500 moving higher we had a 54 uh, with a uh, uh, 54 percent rise with rates rising by 180 percent out there look here is a chart i've shown this to you before I, actually i didn't show you this one before here is the most recent area where we've seen decreasing and increasing rates out there. These are the Fed funds discount rates. So those blue arrows, there's uh, five of those instances out here. Back in the uh, 2019 time frame, four out of five led to lower price after that announcement out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays. For his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So just to finish off F FXY here for Joe D. Joe, just simply watch. It's TD9 count top that formed on uh, August the 5th out there. A price close above 6505. Uh, this is going to continue to move higher out there. So hope that helps you out. As always, thanks so much for your request. Let's go to another request that came in, and that is from uh, Tim B. And uh, Tim B wanted to take a look at BKNG. So BKNG right now is trading out at uh, 3736. It is trading below the bottom of its daily profile and below its oscillator and change line. And on a daily time frame, Tim, not that I can see any kind of a uh, topping signal out there because I don't really on a daily chart. Um, I'd be stretching. I mean, maybe there's a, an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. But we still haven't received the... Uh, we still haven't gotten, oh, I'm on the wrong chart here. Give me a second. Good lordy. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Yeah, I'm having a tough day, apparently. Um, sorry about that, folks. Uh, that's what happens when I flip back and forth between screens. Now now we got BKNG up on the uh, screen out there. So, you know, I guess you could say that this was the right here, the trading day of August the 8th was the beginning of a C point. Uh, but again, no bearish reversal candle. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly chart shows you had a road momentum indicator top. Price got down even below its breakout level. Has had a nice rally and found resistance near the center of its um, the center of its profile, 39.51. But right now we are trading below the bottom of that profile, and that's at 37.58. Do you want to watch that tomorrow, Tim? If price closes below that, uh, it's going to suggest lower price because you'd be below profile support on the weekly, below profile support on the daily. The next area of support out there would be at the 36.62 area, and below that would be at 33.72. You asked about the seasonal chart out here. So let's put up the seasonal chart. I believe we've got the data for that. Let me do this. Sometimes when I put this whole thing on the screen, for whatever reason, it makes the screens go nuts. So I won't do that. I'm just trying to expand it out just a tad. I'm having trouble doing that piece of it. There we go. We'll just do this. So let's type in BKNG. BKNG, which is what? The old Expedia, I believe. So we've got a year's worth of data for this. In fact, we have a total of 25 years worth of data. So we take a look at its seasonal pattern here, Tim. We can see that this typically tops out at the end of August, much like the S&P 500. And here, this tends to run lower, quite frankly, into the rest of the year. Doesn't appear to bottom until about the uh, December 20th uh, type time frame out there. Now you get some other bottoms that show up, but it looks like that final bottom doesn't come until December 19th. You can see if you look at the bottom right-hand panel screen, uh, all September, October, November, December are all unfavorable seasonal months out there. So uh, so the daily time frame, trading below profile support, the weekly, uh, doing the uh, potentially doing the same thing out there, um, is a suggestion that uh, seasonally speaking, that BKNG wants to head the lower price out there. So hope that helps you out. And as you were looking for a long position, I think that long position might not come for quite some time. Uh, maybe you want to consider a short position inside a uh, $3,700 instrument out there. So I do hope that helps you out. Hector wrote in, and Hector wanted to take a look at the uh, GDX, and his question specifically was, is today confirming a Gartley buy pattern? No, I put words in his mouth. It was really was it confirming a buy the D point with the A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. And the answer to that question at this moment in time is no, it is not. We would need some type of bullish reversal candle. We did have a gap to the upside. That gap has been closed because price got down and tagged yesterday's high at 37.36. So we do have price making a little bit more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, but we don't know if that's a bottom. The way I've determined that there would be a bottom is at least with the cavalry showing up, and the cavalry and a move to the downside would be the bulls out there. So uh, you could get to a TD9 count bottom uh, between tomorrow and, uh, and uh, Monday out there. Uh, should the GDX continue to move lower? If we look at the weekly time frame chart, uh, Hector, you've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that confirmed last week. Uh, price is below that oscillator and change line. This is suggesting that price might pull back to support, which would be 3547. And on a monthly time frame chart, you have an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. We do not have a bearish reversal candle. So on a monthly chart, longer term, uh, the GDX looks good. Very much like uh, gold, the longer term chart, you know, things look good out there. So what we're dealing with here is maybe some seasonal factors, maybe a, a correction of a couple of uh, weeks, maybe a couple of months out there. But right now, specifically with regard to answering your question, Hector, we do not have a buy the D point, Gartley buy pattern. We would if we got a bullish reversal candle. Um, so that's what uh, that's all that I 
really I think that I can share with you right now other than going and taking a look at you know what Goldilocks is doing um, we've had a number of requests there's a lot of people inside of this trade I mean I've had three requests three separate requests three different people this morning uh, one of them was Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den another was um, uh, geez I, uh, I don't uh, shoot I, I mean it's off my screen uh, my, my screen where I'm following the uh, the requests that have come in. In any event, with regard to United Health, United Health on a daily time frame will complete a TD nine count top today. Prices testing support, which is the top of its daily profile. That's old resistance. The question is, does that old resistance at 593.26 hold that support? If we close below it, the answer would be no, and would suggest to move back towards 584.20, 577.41, and finally 570.62. The weekly time frame from United Health will go ahead and form a TD9 count top this week. It's possible it'll form a uh, sell the D point top if it's a bearish reversal candle. At the moment, it's a shooting star. Do we need to have two topping patterns? We do not. We've got one topping pattern that's going to complete a TD9 count top this week. It'll, it'll confirm the top this week. It'll complete that top next week out there. Daily says we're at a top. Weekly says we're at a top. Monthly says too soon to call, says that longer term, we want to go higher out there. Um, I don't think that the uh, monthly is the one that is driving the bus right now, but it is bullish. It's in a breakout mode. It would need a bearish reversal candle to confirm a Rogement indicator top. Well, it's only September 5th out there, so we're quite a ways away from making that determination. But the daily and the weekly are suggesting lower price. Now, the weekly is suggesting a move lower back towards this oscillator and change line. That is unless a new profile forms. We don't have a new profile right now, so that number to the downside would be 563. So it does look like that we wanted that United Health is suggesting to you and I that it wants to start making that move to the downside 563 to 570 would be a likely price target if we take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the uh, daily time frame out here um, if we take a look at the daily time frame consecutive moves higher out there what a strong run this has had um, so just the beginning, this will be obviously day one to the downside out here. So we'll want to keep an eye on uh, that. If we take a look at a uh, intraday chart for United Health, let's see what we've got out here. I don't want to pass along any bad information. It's possible the daily is at a support level. So if that's the case, that's the top of its profile. What I would expect and anticipate is that we would see some type of bottoming pattern on the intraday charts. Well, you're looking at the 30 minute chart. You can see an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. If you were to get a bullish reversal can on the 30 minute basis, you would have a Gartley buy pattern. Let's check out the 65 minute time frame chart out here. For United Health, what do we have? We've got um, price trading below profile support. This is suggesting a move to 587.19. That's after it's got a TD9 count top. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. 
with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. I'm going to go ahead and change charts out there. My apology, but uh, it's what I've got to do in order to answer this next question that came in, which was from Pat S. And Pat was just simply asking, when was the Apogee pivot point? Well, that came in this morning at 10.55, just so we were coming on the air. So I was just in the process of updating those uh, levels out there. Now, it's a, it's a nice short-term uh, indicator out here for reasons I can't tell you, not because I can't tell you, mostly because I can't tell you. I've got an idea, but it's just a Stevie idea as to why it works out there. So it's interesting. That moment in time, 10.55, what I do is I mark that on the uh, equity future charts out here. Or, well, on, on a number of different uh, charts. Um, all my study was done on the S&P 500, and what I found was it was the most reliable, celestial, lunar-oriented um, uh, data point that I could find. My price is trading below it from a short-term standpoint, unless you see some type of bottom signal. It's a suggestion that the sellers are the ones that are certainly in control of the market. So with regard to the ES Mini, um, uh, Pat, the uh, number to watch is 5527.25. For the uh, NQ, it's 1907.75. Of course, we're trading below both of those out there. The uh, gold uh, uh, apogee pivot point is 2541.50. The actual high that we've seen so far in this 30 minute bar is 2541.30. So you want to watch that level. Uh, if we take a look at uh, silver, uh, silver's apogee pivot point is up at 29.35. Uh, in the case of light sweet crude, this is on the uh, December contract. That's at 70.57. Let's go figure out the U.S. dollar index. Actually, I'm going to flip this to December just so I have that in there because we're going to be flipping to the uh, December contract here shortly. Uh, still, September is the is the active one, but I don't want to have to do this again. Uh, so first, what I need to do is take this chart turned into a five-minute chart. That just makes it easier for me to find the actual opening price out there, typically. So we just got to go 10.55 or right here. And your Apogee pivot point for the U.S. dollar index is 100.94. So I hope that provided with the information you were looking for, Pat. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Now I'm going to go ahead and get off that chart just so I don't have to have you guys, all of you, saying, hey, Stevie, as much as you can, screaming, you're on the wrong set of charts out there. So that was UNH. Let me see if I've got any other requests. If there was a request inside the Tiger's Den, if you'd be kind enough to retype that in for me, or even if there wasn't, if there's something you want me to look at, please let me know. In the meantime, LB writes in, he says, can we take a look at PPTA? That is platinum, PPTA. So that's an ETF for platinum, I believe. Uh, your long-term holder for much lower prices. Uh, just wants to take a look at it. We're going to do more than take a look at it. So you can see today you have this nice gap to the upside. It was in the process of forming a TD9 count bottom. That will go away by day's end. That is unless price closes below 877. 
We're at 903 right now. What we can also see that's been triggered here is a road momentum indicator signal. So if a bearish reversal candle lead were to form, that would confirm a daily top out there. On the weekly time frame, there's no top in sight, at least not that I see. I do see an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. You would need a weekly bearish reversal candle. All that really has transpired yesterday and the uh, day before was on a weekly uh, uh, chart is pulling back to test support. And support was at Sausage and Change Line, and that's at $7.76 out there. If we take a look at the monthly time frame, monthly time frame is a close last month above a TD9 count breakdown resistance area, 783. Uh, we are in bar number seven. There is no top set in sight here for the monthly time frame, nor the uh, weekly time frame. But the daily, watch for a bearish reversal candle or watch today's close. It is possible that it would be the it would be the so it would be the weirdest TD9 count bottom pattern that I think Stevie has seen out there. Um, I know that that would be, but it'll get that uh, notation if you get a close below if you get a close below the close of bar number five, and that is again at uh, 877 out there. No, wait. Uh, yeah, bar number five. I think I might have given you the wrong number before. Uh, close 877, 877. Sorry about that. So if it closes below 877, you'll get a TD9 count bottom pattern with us testing the high. So what's it doing on a daily time frame with regard to volume? Testing that swing from August 20th. That swing had 474,000 shares so far in just over two hours of trading, 743,000. So you're taking out a swing. You're trying to take out a swing point with volume. What that says is even if we close. Um, you know, below that high, you're going to get back up there and you should retest that. So, again, monthly uh, looks uh, great. That's uh, LB. You're the one writing in for that. Monthly looks good. Weekly looks good. Daily just kind of keep an eye on things out there. So, Lee, I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Uh, Jim wrote in. Uh, Jim was one of the ones looking for UNH. Uh, uh, the Jim in Palm Harbor. Hey, Jim, nice to hear from you. So we were able to cover the, the cover of that. I don't see any other requests coming in by email. Uh, 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 what else do I see out here? Not much. I don't think I've got any other requests. So that being said, I don't believe I have any other requests. Um, oh, thank you, uh, Z, for that uh, nice comment. So let's do this. Let's go back and take a look at what's going on intraday. Uh, what do we have up here? Well, we got gold. Has anything really changed since we looked at those charts last? Nothing that I really see. But by the way, gold to the downside. You've got a nice TD9 count bottom that's in place here on a 15-minute chart. So watch 2534. Well, actually, the number to watch is going to be 253370. If you get a close below 253370, gold will continue its move lower. Otherwise, it's made that uh, retracement, and now it should at least rally towards a 2543 level, maybe 2547 or even 2550 out there. Uh, but what I wanted to look at were the equity charts out here. So let's take a look at the ES again. Let's get up the uh, September contract, and we do that in uh, lieu in lieu of uh, any other requests that are out there. Uh, Lily, Eli Lilly. Okay, so we'll get to Eli Lilly here in just a uh, moment uh, for you. Uh, that is for ELO inside the Tiger Zone. And thanks for reminding me. So on the ES Mini, we can see we are beginning to trade below profile support, 55.16. That's a key area out here. We are starting to take on that TD9 count, the key bottom levels that had formed uh, yesterday or the night before out there. So we're cruising at this moment in time. We are cruising through some support levels. On the 10-minute uh, time frame chart, which had that TD9 count top, let's see if there's any other bottom signals. We, we don't have any kind of bottom signal right yet, or just yet, or maybe not at all. So there's nothing there to assist us. What else could I take a look at out here? Oh, how about a five-minute chart? How about if we really try to see what's going on from a, uh, a real day trading type time frame out here. Let's go to a real short term five minute chart. Now that five minute chart, let me uh, make sure this is properly populated. There we go. You have a TD9 count bottom that was negated out here. The price did find support at the bottom of its profile. So as long as 54.96.50 basically holds, you could easily see a rally up towards the 55.09 level. If price were to close above 55.09, you would see it move up to 55.25. That's just coming from a five-minute time frame chart out there. Uh, so what we don't see here is a series of higher highs. So, uh, you know, I don't know that this TD9 count, well, it already failed. So um, 
So that's not really the greatest sign here for a market that wants to uh, rally. But that profile is helpful. So I really think the ES Mini has, in fact, given us that change in trend. This is a two-hour time frame chart. And you can see coming off of the rally that began back in uh, August, early part of August, August 8th out there, we never saw a price close below uh, a TD9 Cal breakout level until we got into about August the 28th out there. And now we're headed to the next one, which is at 54.85. So that's the next potential level of support, 54.85 on the two hour time frame chart for the PSP. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're going to close out the show, take a look at the Eli Lilly, LLY is a ticker symbol, and then we'll take a quick peek at uh, silver for, you know, visual inside the Tiger's Den. So in the case of Eli Lilly, daily TD9 count top that is present, a weekly Roadsman Dominicator top that is present, and a TD9 count top that should form uh, come end of the month. In order to do that, it just simply needs to close above the close of bar number five on the monthly time frame, and that was at 820.34 out there. We're at 912 uh, 82. So what should Eli Lilly do? Well, we're trading below its weekly oscillator and change line. We're trading above profile in the daily time frame. I would say that what Eli Lilly is likely to do is pull back to its buy zone. The buy zone was established by the weekly profile that formed three weeks ago. That buy zone out here, ELO, is between the levels of 856.83 and 878.68. 844 and change is the uh, green oscillator and change line on the monthly time frame and the top of its monthly profile out there. So it looks to me like that's where price wants to head to. Now, this is going to be day number three of consecutive moves lower out there. 
And we know that, uh, you know, your normal moves are anywhere between two and four bars if something is still bullish out there. So maybe you've got another day lower than maybe a one to two day rally out there. And so that's what you would be watching for. If you only get a two day rally after this move, that's another indication that Eli Lilly wants to trade lower, which is really the message of the daily and the weekly time frame as we speak. On a 30-minute basis, and this is something for you to watch, you have a TD9 count bottom that's going to go ahead and uh, complete as we go off. Oh, it already completed out here. So any close below, this is what you're going to watch really interest session, if you will. Any close below 906.34 is going to suggest that you should continue to move lower out there. And that's what we see when we take a look at Eli Lilly. Real quickly here on uh, silver. I believe the question, I wasn't clear on the question, but here's what we have going on in silver. You've got a TD9 count top. Price got back towards its breakout level, may have actually bottomed. I would say it will have bottomed if price is able to close above that red oscillator and change line from its daily time frame. And that's at 29.13. The uh, weekly chart's got a road to indicator pattern. It has a Gartley buy pattern. The price finding resistance with inside its profile. And that's at the top of the profile, 30.20. Folks, have a uh, terrific Thursday. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow, probably at 11 a.m. sharp. Take care. Be safe out there. Have a great day.